Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today. Now in the past I have made videos about things that were discovered in Egypt recently and if you keep your eyes on the right websites these come up fairly frequently and I believe we will continue to hear about these. I believe there's a lot to be discovered under the sands of Egypt still but what I want to talk about today is actually a rediscovery. This is the city of Fayum in Egypt and just to the southeast I'm going to fly into a site called Huara, and this is the ancient pyramid of Huara here, obviously collapsing in ruins. This is what it looks like, but what historians a couple thousand years ago wrote about was an amazing labyrinth under the sand here, right off the southwest corner in this area, and actually it would be below this canal here. But recent work has pretty much confirmed what these ancient uh, writers were talking about. And I just want to go over to Ancient Origins and uh, just read a little about what they said about this lost labyrinth of Egypt. And once again, this is Ancient Origins, and I'm not going to read this all, but I will leave the link below. It says this, I have actually seen a work beyond words, for if anyone put together the buildings of the Greeks and display of their labors, they would seem lesser in both effort and expense to this labyrinth. Even the pyramids are beyond words, and each was equal to many and mighty works of the Greeks, yet the labyrinth surpasses even the pyramids. And it says these are the words, the words of the ancient Greek historian Herodotus, written in the 5th century BC in his book The Histories, describing a colossal temple said to contain 3,000 rooms full of hieroglyphs and paintings. It was named the Labyrinth by the Greeks. And it says Herodotus was not the only historian to describe the Labyrinth. Manetho, Diodorus, Strabo, Pliny were a few others. And here Herodotus gives a detailed description of this labyrinth he said he actually visited. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it's a pretty detailed account. He talks about chambers, rooms, um, a whole bunch of other details. And this is uh, describes Anatheus Kircher, a famous historian of ancient Egypt, and especially what they had to say about Atlantis. But this is his diagram of what the labyrinth looked like. And when these uh, stories and accounts of the labyrinth trickled down to our era, they were kind of dismissed by some people just because they were so amazing. It says Strabo wrote this. Before the entrances there lie what might be called hidden chambers, which are long and many in number and have paths running through one another which twist and turn so that no one can enter or leave any court without a guide. And others talk about it here. Derodotus says this, when one entered the sacred enclosure, one found a temple surrounded by 40, by columns, 40 to each side. And this building had a roof made of a single stone carved with panels and richly adorned with excellent paintings. It contained memorials of the homeland of each of the kings, as well as the temples and sacrifices carried out on it, all skillfully worked in paintings of the greatest beauty. It says the detailed and consistent descriptions of the labyrinth indicate that this place, this is a place that did actually exist in the ancient past. In fact, as we will soon discuss, it appears to have already been found. And Ancient Origins in part three of their article on the labyrinth gives this account. And before I read from this article, I just want to show you this diagram or map. Not only were historians writing about this, they, but they were making detailed maps and diagrams. Here you see the Pyramid of Amenemet III coming from the 12th dynasty of Egypt. And just off the southwest corner of that period, you see a diagram of these chambers and corridors. But uh, I also want to say recent work here that uh, was overseen by Dr. Carmen Bolter. Uh, just in the last couple of months has pretty much confirmed what ancient historians were talking about that and I'll try to leave links for those interviews below. It's pretty amazing what she talks about, the size of this labyrinth and some of these rooms are actually as big as Olympic-sized swimming pools and I will try to leave a few of those links below again. But 
It says here in this article, more than 2,000 years ago, ancient Greek historians Herodotus and Strabo recorded their visits to the legendary labyrinth of Egypt before it disappeared into the pages of history. Many believed it was lost forever. But it says, but in the last century, great gains have been made in identifying its location, culminating in the latest Mataha expedition, which was used, which has used the highest level of technology to finally unlock the secrets of the lost labyrinth. And it talks about Herodotus again, and a few of his descriptions. Here is the pyramid at Hawara. It says, it is here where William Flinders Petrie made a significant discovery in 1889. Petrie discovered an enormous artificial stone plateau measuring 304 meters by 244 meters, which he interpreted as being the foundation of the labyrinth. He concluded that the labyrinth itself must have been destroyed in antiquity and all that was left was a stone base. And it says, however, Louis de Corgier, researcher and coordinator of the Mataha expedition, questioned Petrie's conclusion that the stone slab must have been the foundations. He recalled many of the classical historians referred to an enormous roof made of a stone. Herodotus says this, the roof is of a stone, like the walls. And Diodorus says this, the building has a roof made of a single stone which is truly incredible if the size of that building is accurate. And it says, Strabo it says this, the wonder of it is the roofs of each chambers are made of single stones. And it says, could it be that the large stone base identified by Petrie was actually the roof of the labyrinth that, and that the entire complex remained hidden beneath it? Obviously, attempting to break through the slab could cause great damage to the site, so the Mataha expedition aimed to explore the area below the slab using ground penetrating radar and it says in February and March of 2008 after receiving permission from the Supreme Council of Antiquities of Egypt headed up at the time by Dr. Zawi Awas a team of georadar specialists from the National Research Institute of Astronomy and Geophysics conducted extensive testing in the area identified by Petrie more than a century earlier what the surveys revealed could pave the way towards one of the dis greatest discoveries in ancient Egypt and here, at a depth of between 8 and 12 meters below the ground, was found a giant network of corridors and caverns and rooms. We should have pretty much a constant single color, but this is what the um, radar sonar imaging showed. And that pretty much confirmed what these ancient historians were writing about. There is actually an amazing complex structure just off the southwest corner of that pyramid. But it says this, suppression of the findings. The highly significant findings of the Mataha expedition were published in the fall 2008 scientific journal and the results were exchanged in public lecture at Ghent University in October 2008 in the presence of the Belgian press. However, it was not long after the Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities put a stop on all communication of the findings due, supposedly, to Egyptian national security sanctions. And that is probably going to be the outcome of all these findings. They are going to be suppressed. Work probably will not be allowed to continue at this site, but there was work done here recently and there was findings done that confirmed what they found back in 2008. And I don't think that this can be suppressed anymore. Zahi Awas and Mark Lehner and these other people that have to preserve Egyptian heritage. I don't know if they can keep this under wraps. Um, once again, I'll leave those articles by Carmen Bolter for you to listen to or those interviews. This is a truly amazing discovery. It confirms what ancient historians were talking about a long time ago. This hints of uh, a history predating Egyptian dynasties that are recognized by the standard model of history. This uh, maybe hints of some maybe uh, very unrecognized uh, civilization living here. I guess this labyrinth is in uh, three or four tiers with the top one being uh, maybe Greco-Roman and they just get older as they go deeper. But historians were talking about this a long time ago. They said it uh, predated the very first dynasties of Egypt 
I hope, hope you thought this was interesting. This is the lost labyrinth of Egypt coming out of a site called Hawara. But I think this is truly one of the greatest discoveries or rediscoveries made in Egypt. And this could open up a lot of new research, but I just don't know if you are going to hear a lot about this because in Egypt and the people who are really in control, they want to preserve Egyptian heritage, which is really too bad, but I'm not worried about that shit. I only report on the truth. Hope you thought this was interesting. Have a nice day.